Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. I'm Kimberly D'Souza in your company. And as promised, I did promise you that we do have royalty in studio. So try to figure out who this person is. So, of course, first of all, she won the Miss Universe competition in 1998. She recorded a jazz demo. She wrote a memoir about her life. She hosted a radio show for a while. And she is now a judge on the reality television competition, Caribbean Next Top Model. If you guess Miss Wendy Fitzwilliam, you were absolutely right. Miss Fitzwilliam, thank you so much for joining us here on the Now Morning Show. Thank you for having me, Kimberly. It's <laughs> lovely to be back at mm. TCT. Ah, so you were here before? Oh, yes. Always. <laughs> Always. Every I feel like I grew up with TTT. Oh, no. <laughs> because I vividly recollect one of my first memories of any sort of pageantry was Miss Universe, and it was through these sorts of facilities. <laughs> Come on, you are welcome <laughs> home. <laughs> so it's a fantastic Friday yeah, we have yeah. Rosie in our midst where we are talking amazing. or continuing the conversation, the perfect way to close off uh, Women's History Month with one of the most, uh, I say prolific, Names. Oh dear. <laughs> not really and truly. Let's not downplay the fact that I don't remember any other Miss Universe. No, it's true. You were my first Miss Universe. Yeah. I remember actively watching the patterns. I remember feeling like, oh, this is something I might pay attention <laughs> to in my future. And then the level of accomplishment that you continue to have, you continue to show young women exactly what we can be and more. Thank you, Ainka. Wow, I'm just <laughs> one foot in front of the other. Ah, I like it. it doesn't seem like that because as Ayinka was saying, you've accomplished so much, right? I mean, you, you wrote your memoir a few years after yes. that, and of course it was very, very controversial. And one yes. of the things I always wanted to ask you was why then? Why did you choose to write and expose, of course, so much of your of intimate myself? life? Yes. Well, I think because my uh, pregnancy was so controversial in Trinidad and Tobago, and internationally it was played very differently to the way it was yeah. here. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew that my son eventually would read about his early life and I wanted him to have his early life well documented by his mom. Yes. And in doing so, I mean, I always kept journals. When I told my manager, um, Tyron Barrington at the time, uh, you know, very excitedly uh, that I was uh, having my first kid and he said to me, oh, Wes, you must write a book. And I didn't know what that book would look like. <laughs> you know? Of course, I um, you At the time, it just, he said to me, you just keep journaling and, um, and you'll eventually, and, and we'll eventually publish. Right. And, uh, and I decided that if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it honestly. Um, I'm going to reveal aspects of that experience that I think are, uh, that are universal, that a lot of women uh, experience, mm -hmm. but we don't talk about. Yes. Um, and I thought it important to do so. You know, I have absolutely no regrets because um, what I share in Letter Sail, and I call it an experience book, <laughs> because it was of, about my experience becoming a mom uh, primarily. Um, and there were aspects of it that were a little bit different and unique to me because of who I am in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, I am a woman like so many other, mm -hmm. um, so many others. At that time, a young professional um, finding my way, wanting um, a family, uh, not sure that I would be able to do so in the traditional, <laughs> in, the, in, in the traditional way, yeah. um, but very confident mm -hmm. um, that I was very happy about my child and I wanted to share that. that so that's amazing. why I chose to do it as I did. You know, I tend to do things um, my way, I hope respectfully. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, yes. But definitely my way. Amazing. Which is necessary because, and interestingly, which is for me, anyways, when we learn about pageantry and the rules that in, don't allow you to be married or have children while Correct. holding the crown, yes. it was a beautiful segue after having in the title, <laughs> I think, to showing that yes, we can do all yeah. of that be Miss Universe, be mothers, be professionals, as Correct. you said, continuing to again embody that well, empowerment, That's personification right. of everything and more. But I do want to say, and this is a very important point, you know, those rules uh, for pageants may seem very archaic, um, but pageants are business, mm -hmm. right? And you are the business, you mm -hmm. the title holder. Nobody cares who the president of Miss Universe is or who's the vice president, finance right. or the legal mm -hmm. counsel. Miss Universe is Miss Universe to the world, and therefore the company makes its money from you showing up. Right. Uh, it's very difficult to do so, or almost impossible, mm -hmm. for a year, for 365 days. Um, if you are a parent, right. if you're a young mother, mm -hmm. um, if you are in a relationship, it's very, very difficult. Right. As a matter of fact, many of the young women who 
uh, in relationships when they win Miss Universe are not in relationships by the end mm -hmm. of that year uh, because you are on the go 24-7. Right. Uh, you know, particularly the last six months of your year, you are literally every meal is an event. You know, you are traveling constantly. I remember when I became Miss Universe, I thought, how cool, you know, they set you up in a beautiful apartment in Los Angeles. Mm. You have an apartment manager whose job it is <laughs> wow. to make sure you are just super happy. If you touch the bonbons, <laughs> another um, container that shows up in the nice. freezer. If you touch anything, the corn kills a particular type of bread, it just keeps coming. And I thought, wow, I could so get used to this. And then you can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> then you realize, oh, ho, there's a reason yeah, why yeah, yeah. this it's person is here catering to me. Because there would be times you come back from a trip to South America. And I lived in Ellie, the last title holder to live in Ellie. From South America, and there's a limo waiting outside your apartment to take nice. you to Asia. <laughs> nice. Some other you country, literally yes. had enough time to have a shower. Pull yourself together, Andy. snack on something I would say, not even a meal, yes. and that was not rare. Yes. In the last six months of your year particularly, it's rather intense. You mm -hmm. know, you are a working woman, unquestionably, and you have a short window. It's one year, right. wow. and you're up. A lot to accomplish. Now, Ms. Fitzwilliam, you, you, you spoke about wanting to capture this moment of history for your son, and of course, you've done so much with your life after winning the, the uh, pageantry. What do you want young girls to learn or to take from the life that you've led? Ooh, um, I think what I said earlier, you do life your way. Mm -hmm. You have to be show up as your authentic self every day, and if you fall off that wagon and you find yourself going down the wrong road, life has a way of writing your course. Mm. And it may not look like writing your course to you in the moment, because you are so ambitious and focused on whatever you think is for you. Um, but life has a way of guiding you um, along your path. Um, so being very in tune with you, uh, finding regardless of what you enjoy doing. I did pageantry at the time very differently to how pageantry was done before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I got a lot of heat from friends as a student attorney entering Mr. Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, some of it good, some of it bad. Mm -hmm. I was surprised at the support I got from the registrar of the university. But making that choice meant that there were um, challenges that I had to face later on, that if I had not been so well known, there's a preconceived notion when you walk into a room if you're a well-known personality of who you are. Yeah. I've stood in lines at bathrooms that fits right here in Trinidad and Tobago and hear people talking about this when if it's William. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Yeah. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Right. The flip side of that is my people generally treat me phenomenally well. Right. Um, they're still very, very proud of me. They're kind to me, most <laughs> <laughs> of them. Well, I mean, so and much to of my <laughs> son, you know. Yes. Um, so again, I, you know, being a mom and a single mother was a choice I made. And that meant that Elan had to be included in almost everything I did. It humbled me because I could not um, do every single yes. thing myself. I had to rely on my village, mm -hmm. my friends like Barbara, Joseph, Cynthia, Anthony. Um, Peter E. on occasion, Patrick Donna. It, mm. it takes a village. <laughs> you know, my amazing parents wow. um, who are now in their 80s, mom, mid 80s, dad, late 80s, and still there for me as mommy and daddy. That is amazing. You know, and of course, Elon is there, their eyeball, but he's done <laughs> uh, literally everything with me. I remember, you know, he was what, about uh, four months old, carrying him to. Um, a show at, at, at Lincoln Center, jazz concert at Lincoln Center in his car seat. Oh, <laughs> wow. And we still do almost everything together. Well, you're going to bring amazing. him to the next interview. <laughs> because we have to continue this conversation. It really is necessary. Yeah, we yes, haven't scratched the surface of, of what we really wanted to ask. Of what is happening yes. next to his next top model. Yes. Oh, oh next top model. We mm. moved on from mm. that. Exactly. Oh. I want you guys, next time you have me on, Elon is lovely, but he's away at school. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have um, the, the head of the animation uh, program at UTT. Yes. That's where I am now, okay. working on that program at UTT. And that's a space women do not usually play in. And she is rocking it. Mm -hmm. Ms. Fitzwilliam, we really, really have to wrap, but thank you so much for joining us here on the Now Morning Show. We are going to have you back soon. Guys, you're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us. Yeah. <laughs> 
me cooler and we 